Welcome back, everybody, to the CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen. If you're with us here, you may already know that this is our 2024 season preview series. This is the second one that we've done. We are moving right down the table from Cavalry to Forge FC, our North Star Cup champions from 2023. Uh, again, 10 minutes, five questions on Forge. I am starting the clock right now. And here we go. Mitchell, question number one. Forge just won their fourth trophy in the CPL. Can they stay motivated for a sixth season? Question number one for me: Did you change the alarm on the uh, on the timer there? Because I did. Producer... It's actually going to be so much worse this time. Oh no! <laughs> Producer Benny, I think described it as forks in a blender, which was an app sound for what it was the first time. But I think that's harsh. But yeah, that that kept Forge. me motivated to uh, to get to the ten minutes, but. Um, yeah, I think in terms of Forge staying motivated this upcoming season, you know, new faces help. Uh, I think there's a bit more competition for places maybe than there were in years past. I mean, last year they brought back almost their entire team. And while we thought that would lead to consistency, I think in some ways it led to complacency uh, of guys, you know, kind of already knowing where they stood. And I also think internally, you know, there's a lot of Forge players who maybe won't be happy with their performance in 2023. Um, a lot of that is injury related, but I'm thinking of guys like Tristan Borges, David Chouinier, Jordan Hamilton, maybe even a guy like Alessandro Hojabrapour, you know, who didn't maybe take that step forward that we all thought he would in 2023. Um, so I think, you know, there's plenty of guys that are heavily motivated to get them back to that level. And uh, I think that that's only going to, you know, help. Forge once again be near the top of the pack this upcoming season? Yeah, I feel like this is a question that we asked of Forge last year when they'd won their third championship. And the answer when it came down to it was yes. Now, it was a, a bit of a strange year for them, maybe not as consistent in the regular season as they'd like to be. But I think we, if there's one thing we know about the CPL at this point, it's that when it really comes down to it, Forge switch it on, they find an extra year. Um, I, I think that, as you said, there's a lot of things for them to work out this year. You know, they fell behind to start games a lot last season. They are probably not going to want to have to make life as difficult for themselves as they did, you know, having to come from behind. What, yeah, 17 points from losing positions last season because they were in losing positions a lot. And they have scored a lot of late goals, including an extra time of a final. Uh, <laughs> they'd like to be a little bit more consistent with that. But again, as we know, they know that, you know, their philosophy is all they have to do is get to a playoff game and they know that they <laughs> they feel like they can win it yeah uh and that's that's gone and again you know you talk to players even the ones that have been there for all four of these championships they still know that this feeling doesn't come you know it, it it feels like it comes all the time for them but they know that it's still something that you can't take for granted uh and it's not something that ever gets old right <laughs> celebrating a championship in a locker room it, it's it's not something that they're gonna sniff at or take for granted question number two can this Forge backline this year keep up the defensive standard that they have set? A couple of departures. Obviously, Mandrakar James was a Defender of the Year nominee. Reza Rama was one of the best defensive fullbacks in the league last year. Bit of change in the backline. Mitch, can they stay at that standard? I think they can, but there's definitely questions. I mean, again, internally, you know, a guy like Garvin Matusla, Maliko Labi Bellawu, they'll probably get more minutes this season. And I think both those players are very capable of stepping in and and being solid, you know, Daniel Parra is a huge signing. Um, all kinds of experience in, you know, the best league in this region. So uh, that certainly helps and, and adds quality. And they just go to strength strength there. But I think the big question is, you know, in net, which hasn't been a question in years. It's been Tristan Henry, you know, considering you missed the CONCACAF fixtures. We're not fully sure of the situation there. Um, I thought Colongo was very solid during CONCACAF. And I think... In mm -hmm. terms of his ability to distribute the ball really well, there's um, something that can be added there. We haven't seen uh, Yassim Kolilat yet, uh, but you know, a player who comes with decent pedigree out of uh, out of US University. So there, there's quality there still, but it's a question mark when it hasn't been in previous years. Yeah, for sure. And for those who who don't know, uh, Forge officially said that Tristan Henry was was taking some time away for personal reasons during Concacaf. It appears that Christopher Colongo is likely to be the, the starter for this team to begin the season. Uh, we will we'll see how that situation evolves. But again, the back line. For me, Malik Olabi Belli was maybe Forge's best player in the first game against Chivas. Uh, at left back as well. Uh, incredible, incredible. And don't forget that a player that's coming back 
for Forge, Eliman Cisse. I think he might be the one that slots in at right back for this team, even though he's more naturally a midfielder. He can play pretty much anywhere on the pitch, though, as we've seen him in his time with this club. Moving on to question three. At the other end of the pitch, what does the Forge attack look like? What is the best front line for this team? Obviously, the only big departure is is Wubens Passius. They've brought in Nana Mpoma. Uh, what what do you think is the the you know winning combination for this team? Yeah, I think the winning combination um, might be just finding three that are really good and, and sticking with them because I think that's been an issue over the past couple seasons is the fact that they just tend to switch it up a lot and you know it, it's been hard to find consistency for a lot of these players and um yeah i think there is a lot of exciting options th that's for sure you know um nana and poma comes in with a, an incredible resume was excellent in belgium uh, a few years ago and i think what's exciting about him is he has played a little bit as a center forward um which is incredibly important with Pasias leaving um at the same time, I don't think you take Taron Campbell out of the lineup just yet, considering what he's done. You know, the league's all-time leading goal scorer. Seems like Benny Badibanga is uh, going to be the guy to go on on the left. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a full season of him, considering what he was able to do in just a short snippet last season, uh, was really impressive. Uh, on the right at the moment, has to be David Schwanier, I think. You know, just, just his ability to step up in big games. But again, Tristan Borges is going to absolutely push uh both sides um I, I think for for that position you've got a you know a former player of the year there and you've got young kevon Tavernier who gets to learn from all of these guys as well um which i think is is an incredible asset so um i think it's the three i mentioned but i think you know hopefully bobby is a little bit more consistent with who he chooses this year i think yeah it, it'll be interesting i think again because it is mostly the same group the the task is going to be on all these guys to win that job. I think we saw Batty Banga kind of win it towards the end of last season. He was maybe the only one that was kind of nailed into a spot there because of how quick he burst on the scene. Debbie Chouinier obviously went through some injury issues last year. I think he had surgery on his knee and then still came back and was able to play in a final, which, you know, insane. But, you know, if he's healthy all the year, then, then he's obviously a massive part of this team. I'm interested in Taryn Campbell this year without having – that competition for minutes from movements Passius. There is Jordan Hamilton still there with him. Course, yeah. um, and, and he's obviously a very experienced player who's going to push him. But I think it feels to me like Taryn Campbell is you know, kind of the guy at the number nine spot this year. And I think there is going to be some pressure on him to, to be that consistent performer, which he hasn't always been in a Forge shirt, I think. So maybe, maybe this is his year. Question number four for Forge. We've got just over two minutes left. Which new signing do you think is going to have the biggest impact for this team? I think it's Elimon Cisse. I mean, it's a massive bonus anytime you can bring in a player of that caliber who's already familiar with the system and the league. Uh, that takes away some of that integration process that can be difficult for certainly international players, but even domestic players as well. You know, he can play, like you said, that right fullback position. He can step into the midfield. He fits the forge um, MO in terms of tactical fluidity. Uh, you know, I, I think that's an ex exciting signing for them and and one that you know you could just tell based on forge fan reactions um how good this player has been for them and just how yeah important he could be for them again this year a new old signing i think i'm going to go with daniel para uh, at left back just like because it. he is such a highly touted young player coming from from monterey and liga mekis i believe that you know there were several cpl clubs interested in getting him in on loan and, and Forge have managed to get him in. He is a, a natural left back. And what that also does is it maybe allows him to play somebody like Kwesi Poku a little bit further forward as well, who's a player that I know Bobby Smirniotis rates very highly and wants to have part of his team. And maybe if he's played a little bit higher up the pitch and Para can handle some of those defensive duties, then that might help get the most out of another very young player who is going to be very important to this team. All right, we have one minute left. Mitchell, what does success look like for Forge in 2024? I mean, trophies are the minimum for Forge at this point. Uh, I think winning the CPL Shield maybe this year will be a bigger target in terms of demonstrating that consistency and being good over the bulk of the season instead of, you know, just over the sprint again, as they have been in past years. I also think it'd be big for them if they can finally beat an MLS side. Um, it, it, You know, they'll get a fourth crack at CF Montreal uh, if yeah. they can beat York in uh, the Canadian Championship. So I, I think that would be big for them and next step in their evolution. 
I agree. I think the Canadian Championship is actually quite big for this club this year because they haven't really. It's kind of something missing from their their resume is they don't have that deep run. They obviously played a final against TFC. They've been to penalties against MLS teams twice. They've never beaten one. I think that's actually going to be something that they're quite focused on this year, uh, as they they you know try it I suppose to proceed in that competition throughout the year. But even York is not an easy matchup for them, who always give them kind of their one of their best games of the season. We have two seconds, one second. Oh, oh is that no. better? I don't know. Is that better? <laughs> we'll I wish there was an alarm that was like, yeah, we need to find an alarm that's like just like the three whistles at the end of a football match. <laughs> um, that would probably be a little bit more on theme, but uh, the terrifying radar alarm is what we're going to go with for now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching our second of the CPL season previews on the CPL newsroom presented by Volkswagen. Thank you very, very much for watching, and we hope we see you very soon with our next one.